In 2010, Swedish developer Sky Goblin put out a little low-res freeware game called The Journey Down Chapter 1 Over the Edge. It was a well-regarded point-and-click adventure game that went to be remade in 2012 with a full HD coat of paint. It's been over four years from that first release, with many fans awaiting what happened to our trio of heroes. And this week on Steam and iOS, the second chapter emerges from the mist, inviting you to uncover the secrets hidden within. Last week I got to give my thoughts on the first chapter of the game. You can find that in the link in the description if you'd like to hear more on that. But for now, Chapter 2. The story takes place immediately after the events of the first game, where our heroes go to Port R2, a dark town surrounded by a sea of mist. Not to give too much away, the three are caught up in a conspiracy involving the Forbidden Underland a place under the mist that the government has banned from exploring or even talking about. Whereas Chapter 1 was a chill hangout on a quiet port filled with mostly laid-back people without a care in the world, Chapter 2 is straight-up film noir by comparison. You're in a bad place on a bad track, Angel. It has darker colors and backdrops, the music is much more menacing, the three characters wear completely different outfits, and it has a lot of classic noir elements like a femme fatale character and a corrupt conspiracy. In my last video, one of my major complaints with The Journey Down is how it decided to break everything up in chapters and the releases being very far apart, and it's still a valid criticism. But after playing the second chapter, I understand the justification for breaking it up. The first two chapters are just so dramatically different from another in terms of tone. There have been good adventure games in the past that have changed tones on it halfway through. The Curse of Monkey Island comes to mind. It might just be a case where they were still developing the story in the midst of Chapter 1, but it makes a lot of sense to break it up into chapters considering the tone and the different style of the game. And I don't want to say this game works simply because it's a darker take on it. I feel the game works with its darker setting, its gloomy conspiracy, and its higher stakes, and then throwing in Buana and Kito. <laughs> hey, cut it out, Buana! <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> Won't do it again. <laughs> They're both put in a gloomy city, wanting nothing to do but to chew them up and spit them out, but that never affects their laid-back attitudes. They're always joking around, laughing their way through everything, and having a great time. Buana gets new items with such enthusiasm and is never driven to the point of being rude to anybody in the game. It makes the game a lot funnier to contrast the cynical setting with Buana's chill optimism. Ha! Just imagine all the creepy stuff I could do with this! It still works as a noir-type story, but manages to keep to the spirit of the first chapter, and that's not easy to pull off. The game also adds a great amount of lore to the Journey Down's world. Here we learn the intricate details of mist fishing and how the city uses eels that are surrounded by the mist. It's clear that Sky Goblin spent a lot of time developing this world, with interesting designs for its ships and towns along with a colorful set of characters. Part of the behind the scenes mentions that there were a lot more puzzles and places before the finished product was released, and it shows playing it. There's one point where you find a map mentioning a few more places in the city that aren't in this chapter. The House of Butterflies is one I would have liked to visit. The team saw a few different places to trim the fat in the story, and it flows well because of that. That's especially true for the game's puzzle design, as it shares the same difficulty with the first chapter being very easy to solve. And again, I appreciate that. I never needed a walkthrough for the game, and that made it go at such a great pace. A lot of them involve not really thinking in weird alien logic to solve. In fact, everything seems a little bit too logical to deduct. There is a bookended puzzle right after the game's climax that I enjoyed quite a bit here, including figuring out different symbols. It involves using a very detailed guide that you acquire with a lot of different symbols that I wish the game had more puzzles like it. Most are like, oh, I can use the plunger on this object and then I'll get this and I could give it to this person and that, that you don't really have to think a whole lot about. Again, adventure game veterans might be a bit off-put by the ease of the challenge in some of the puzzles, but again, the pacing goes great and the puzzles for what they are are very well balanced. The puzzles here are still pretty fun to figure out, especially seeing the end results of some of the more funny ones. Both the audio and visual presentation are top-notch, with excellent voice acting throughout and very well-polished visuals. It's also worth mentioning that some of the frame rate issues from the first chapter are far less of a problem in the second. It also adds a little bit of variety by adding montage sequences with a different art style. 
The game is also the very last original soundtrack by composer Simon de Souza, as he passed away before the game's release. He passed the project to his friend Jamie Salisbury, who worked with de Souza to provide additional music for this game. Some of Simon's final tracks from his last charity album are included in the game's soundtrack. De Sosa provided a refreshing and original soundtrack to offer the medium of video games, and the first two chapters of The Journey Down would be far less without them. He was a wonderful composer and will be surely missed. Overall though, I'd say The Journey Down Chapter 2 is a welcome addition to the series. While some of the puzzles can be a bit of a pushover, and there are times when the dialogue feels a little bit overwritten, one part in the bookend explaining the climax comes to mind, I got quickly absorbed into the world with its rich lore, strong visuals, and hanging out with Buana and the fun characters that he runs into is just as much fun as the first chapter. The second chapter is a bit lengthier than the first, as the first chapter took me about 3 hours and chapter 2 took me about 4.5 hours to get through it. There's no telling when the last chapter will be complete, but I'd say the second chapter is very much worth a look. Thanks again for watching my little video on the journey down today. If you liked what you saw here, feel free to take a look at my last review on Shovel Knight. A link to the journey down is in the description below. Happy adventuring!